Good morning and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. And coming up, President Muhammadu Buhari, state governors and other leaders and politicians extol APC national leader Bola Tinubu at the 69th birthday colloquium. And with several groups calling for secession, President Buhari says Nigerians are stronger together. Yes, of course. Uh, also, the president will be flying out later today to the United Kingdom for a routine checkup. Also coming up, National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, warns against an unregistered so-called insulin tea, which reportedly cures diabetes. The agency says it's fake. We'll be discussing fake drugs this morning. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbonwane. It feels good to be here again. It's a Tuesday morning. Uh, we, of course, are encouraging everyone to continue to push themselves through the week. The month is over in, what, 48 hours? Yes, about 48 hours. So we should be talking about Happy New Month uh, very soon. Good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. Good to see you, Osaogi. Same here. Good so, morning to you. Um, a couple of things that we're talking about this morning. First of all, let's start from um, the colloquium yesterday. was the 12th mm -hmm. uh, um, Latino Book Colloquium, and it um, um, was very interesting. Um, there were so many talking points. A, a lot of people have reacted to some of the statements made you know, by the governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Ganduji, mm -hmm. uh, by President Obama Dubari himself, uh, by the vice president, Yemi Yusimbadu, and of course, uh, Balati Dubu himself. There's so many reactions to some of these things. Um, but for me, I'll start by saying that um, I, I felt, you know, I, one of the things that I found interesting was the presence, you know, and the people who showed up for Bolatini yes. yesterday, 69th birthday, um, and it was filled with everybody who is everybody um, in Nigeria. Um, from the National Assembly, traditional rulers, so the president. governors, the president, <laughs> uh, pres the former president of Sierra Leone, uh, um, by Koroma, uh, George uh, Ware, and um, a couple of other, other people who were present there. It, mm -hmm. it was, um, it, it was, you know, evident of how much um, respect and you know love yes. that you know people um, have for Balame Tinubu, and so that's one of the things that I noticed. Besides the you know you know controversial as people would describe it, talking points here and there. Yeah. Uh, but but I, I I I enjoyed seeing the presence of every single person uh, showing up for uh, his birthday. Yes, really, I, I agree with that. I guess it just goes on to show you know um, how just how much followership you know that he commands how much respect he has from his peers yes. you know just taking a look at the lineup of guests there even though you know lots of people were notably absent you know but we understand that everybody had you know best wishes good wishes for him another thing to note about the 12th colloquium you know celebrating his birthday is the fact that you know he uses this as an opportunity to not just throw a lavish party even though that might happen that we're not aware of but i mean in the eye of the public this is a time everyone knows that March 29th yearly is the time where uh, Tinubu gathers world leaders, global leaders, or at least leaders in Nigeria and, yeah. and in Africa, uh, you know, to talk about national issues. Let's talk about security. What's the way forward for, you know, from all the challenges we're having? I, I think that's a fantastic idea, yes. you know, that shows the kind of leadership, you know, that he practices, you know, just as he preaches. Yes. Also, the fact that you know, for the first time, you know, COVID-19 pandemic, to the best of my knowledge, is the first virtual colloquium, like, you know, and also the first time he's citing this out of Lagos. It's, you know, he held in yeah, Kano so, State. So, so those, we saw the governor of Kano of State, Omar yes. Ganduji, you know, hosting this at the state gov government house. And uh, it was just such a fantastic time. I remember speaking with you yesterday, one of my favorite parts of the colloquium. Yeah, we know, we enjoy all the conversations, but the orchestra, that music, the, it was, it was, it was, it was Madu. Let's let's put it that way. <laughs> I know you all it, understand it what I'm trying to say. It, it was amazing how the orchestra, you know, put together the um, the happy birthday song for him. I think that was really beautiful. I also enjoyed the there's there's an uh, Shiwaju song that was played. It's, it's a Hausa song, I believe, that you know played uh, in the start of the colloquium. That I found very interesting. Also, I don't understand Hausa well enough, uh, but you know, I think the, the whoever it is that put the, the song together did a pretty good job. Um, so yes. yes, I I enjoyed you know moments from it. I enjoyed. Um, and every part of it. So let's quickly also go through, you know, a quick report uh, from uh, the colloquium yesterday and show, share with you little details here and there that you may have missed. Enjoy. I see you.
Our common bond, our common wealth, the imperative of national cohesion for growth and prosperity. That is a theme for this year's edition of the Bola Tinubu Colloquium, held to mark the 69th birthday of the former governor of Lagos State and national leader of the All Progressive Congress. The event held at the Coronation Hall, Kano State, and was attended physically and virtually by President Muhammad Wari, former President of Sierra Leone, Dr. Enes Bai Koruma, the President of Liberia, George Weir, Vice President, Professor Yemi Yoshimbajo, the Governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Ganduje, and other state governors, National Assembly leadership, with the Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila, traditional leaders, and many more. As the chairman of the occasion, President Muhammad Buhari, advised that the country should consolidate on the strength of its unity. We must count our blessings in Nigeria and see in them the crucial factors of peace and unity. Adding his voice, Vice President Yemio Shimbajo argues that Nigerians are stronger and more powerful together than being apart. For the purveyors of breaking up into small components, into small countries, perhaps they should be reminded that we would not have been able to accept Governor Ganduje's offer to come to Kano at short notice, since we would all have needed visas to come to Kano. The Kano state governor, Abdullahi Ganduje, stated the importance of having a united Nigeria. Issues of tribalism, religious intolerance, nepotism, suspicion among the elites, all these variables, unless if we come together, they will continue to pull us down. And the celebrant, Ashiwaju Bolatinubu, shared his views on Nigeria's unemployment figures and the urgency Nigeria needs to fix the gap. It is time we are under police and we are, comp we are competing with arm robbers and the bandits to recruit from the youths who are unemployed. 33% unemployed recruit 50 million youths into the army and the, uh, the other, uh, take away from their recruitment source. The 12th Bola Tinubu Colloquium is held annually to mark the former governor's birthday with the aim to bring burning national discourse to the fore. Osaogi Ogbonwa. Plus TV Africa. All right, so that was the report. Uh, Osarage packaged that fantastic one there about the 69th birthday colloquium of uh, a two time uh, Lagos State Governor, Bola Tinubu. Now, President Muhammad Buhari will be flying to the United Kingdom later today for a routine medical checkup. A statement signed by his special advisor on media and publicity, Femi. Additional says the president will meet with security chiefs this morning before traveling. He's expected back in the second week of April and trust Nigerians, people have been reacting to this. All right, so talking about this medical tourism, we know that it's the 12th time since President Muhammad Buhari became president in 2015 for him to be traveling out of the country, specifically, specifically to the United Kingdom for a medical checkup. And the reactions we've been getting from this isn't funny because he announced his medical tourism on the same day that the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors announced that their warning strike was over and that they will be embarking on a nationwide strike on April 1st because they have not been paid their salaries hazard allowances, compensation for doctors who have died due to COVID-19, and just general welfare. Yes. If doctors in the UK were going through the same thing that doctors in Nigeria are going through, there would not be a UK for anybody to travel to for medical tourism. Absolutely not. You know, but, and at the same time also, um, I, I haven't seen anyone who has you know, spoken about this and you know, doesn't have a problem with it you know, or defended it. Um, you know, most you know, most people who don't want to speak against you know things like this will rather will stay quiet. Uh, but the reactions to this have mostly been about you know what like what you just mentioned, and then second is how 
is it that five, six years after being in that position, um, there's still no hospital in Nigeria that is good enough for the president to be, you know, treated or to, um, you know, assess med medical, you know, health care? Um, how possible is it that the Aso Rock Clinic that receives a budget every year for the last, I'll say once again, six years, has not been set up well enough uh, to be able to treat Despite whatever it is. Despite the yearly budget allocations, yes. you know, in t to the tune of millions of naira. So people would argue that, oh, you know, it's not, you know, the fact that, you know, there's a budget for it doesn't mean that all the funds are released. Sometimes, you know, you don't get all, you know, 100% of the funds that are budgeted for it. But it's still not an excuse that six years, six years is, is enough time. And so at what point, really, will Nigeria's health care uh, be good enough, good enough for the president? You know, talk less of regular Nigerians who can't afford to go to the UK. You and know, I wouldn't I, be surprised, Asaroge, if it was a Nigerian doctor who would eventually treat him in the UK. And I say this with all confidence because we've interviewed doctors on The Breakfast who are Nigerians who work in the UK. Thousands and thousands of Nigerian doctors yes. working in those countries. So if we can go out there and we have the system that's in place that allows us to do our jobs and do with satisfaction, why can't you simply copy paste? Yeah. Replicate the system they have that make things work for them. And let's see just how much we'll generate, especially from medical tourism. Lots of people are looking for medical solutions and we can give that in Nigeria. Yeah, absolutely, we can. Once again, how will the, the current administration rate itself eight years after, you know, by 2023, um, with regards healthcare? What would we say or what would they say that they've been able to achieve with regards, you know, to healthcare? Mm -hmm. If the president still cannot assess um, healthcare here in Nigeria, if, you know, if six years after he still needs to go to the UK, what then is the, you know, the case for the common man, the, you know, Nigerian, the civil servant who can't afford those trips, who falls ill every now and then? What really is the case? And I don't know how these things can be defended. I really have no idea if there is any need to defend this. They, and they cannot. if there is, you know, any person in the presidency who's thinking maybe this looks really, really bad, but we don't care. Maybe this looks really, really bad, you know, optics, body language, whatever, you know, word you want to use, but we either do not care or would we'll sort it out later. Yeah, but Mark, I already mentioned this yesterday. You know, if you're talking about people in the white, not the White House, people in the government house, you know, in Nigeria, that would, you know, see this and turn a blind eye. They're all benefiting from this. These people also get entitled to trips like this. You see what governors benefit. They travel whenever they will. And while we're left to suffer in our public hospitals where doctors will treat you like trash because would you really blame them? Because have the doctor eaten today? I remember. When last did they get their salaries? I remember, um, I'm not sure what state it was now, um, um, a quiet bomb or somewhere where I, 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 either a former governor or, you know, a, per, a person in, in, in the government as at that time, this is sometime this year, um, fell ill and had to be flown abroad for treatment. And the, the state government actually wrote a letter um, um, ordering that every single bill that that person, you know, incurs, wherever, in whatever country the person is treated, that the state should take care of it. Um, and that simply tells you that in the state there, with the amount of money that has been invested or is budgeted for healthcare, in, on, even on the state level, they've still not been able to fix their hospitals enough for, you know, for Nigerians. You, and so, you, you speak to doctors they, and they tell you how they need MRI scans, they need this and that, you know, for treatment of cancer. And there's only one in, 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 in Nigeria, there's only two. I'm like, why can we... It was honest, one of the things I, that, the, that, they, that they campaigned with, if you remember, um, to end medical tourism. It was one of the things that was mentioned back then. Uh, Femi Additional, a few days ago, said the president never you know, made some of these statements. Well, um, this is we'll really see. sad, to be honest. All right. Um, stay with us. We, of course, welcome you once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We are going on a short break, and when we come back, it's off the press time. What are the major news stories making headlines across Nigeria today? We'll share with you after this break.